Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, the government has published the bill that will trigger the UK's departure from the EU, as you've just heard. It's very short on detail. MPs will get just five days to debate it. But it was Jeremy Corbyn's decision to order all Labour MPs to back it that prompted the resignation of one of his shadow ministers this afternoon. Fatima Manji is in Westminster. Fatima, um, go for it. Yes, John. Well, here it is in its full glory, about uh, 137 words or five and a half tweets, as one MP put it. It is a bill that the government has been forced to publish by the Supreme Court, which means that Parliament has to decide if it's going to confer power on the Prime Minister to begin that process of Brexit. Now, it's obviously very short. MPs will debate it on Tuesday and Wednesday. The government says it is fast-tracking this process so that it can begin the process of triggering Article 50 before the end of March, a self-imposed deadline by the government. Now, all of this is causing frustration among MPs who say the scant detail and the short time that they're getting to discuss this, they'll only have five days, is outrageous. One MP, Chuka Amuna, says the government is now acting like an elective dictatorship. Here is one MP, Labour's Ben Bradshaw, ben Bradshaw, who will be voting against this bill. I think it's completely outrageous for the government to restrict debate on this, the single biggest issue this country has faced in our lifetimes that will affect generations to come, and they're giving us three days to discuss it. That is a contempt of Parliament, and I think it's a real pity that Labour are going along with this. And it is in Labour ranks that the most trouble has actually begun. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has told his MPs that they cannot block Brexit, is imposing a three-line whip, meaning they have to vote for this bill. That has already prompted one resignation. Tulip Sadiq, MP for Hampstead and Kilburn, uh, early years shadow minister, has resigned, saying her MPs voted for Remain, uh, her constituents voted for Remain, and therefore she cannot back Brexit and she wants to fight it from the back benches. Now, Labour's in a difficult position. They've got Leave constituents and, and Remain constituents, and their MPs are divided. Expect more resignations, and Jerry Corbyn is putting out a call for unity, asking his MPs to come together. I say to everyone, unite around the important issues of jobs, economy, security, rights, justice, those issues, and we'll frame that relationship with Europe in the future, outside the EU. Now, Labour has tabled amendments to this bill to try and soften that hard Brexit, but rebellion in the Labour ranks is still ongoing. I've spoken tonight to at least one shadow minister who says next week they will be voting against this bill and will take the consequences. So rebellion has been uh, delayed, but not entirely averted. Well, as we've just been talking about, the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn doesn't want his MPs to block the triggering of Article 50. Trouble is, not all his MPs are playing along with that plan. It'll be a clear decision that we want all of our MPs to support the Article 50 vote when it comes up next week. But no commitment to a three-line whip? It's clearly a three-line whip. It is a, th it is a vote on Article 50. My constituents voted to remain in the European Union. I am leaning towards voting against Article 50 because I am here to represent their views. And if I have to resign my shadow ministerial position because of the stance I take, it will be unfortunate, but I am here as the MP for Hampstead and Kilburn. I'm joined now by political editor Nick Watt, and the MP for Hampstead and Kilburn did indeed. That's Bye -bye. right. Um, so Jeremy Corbyn faced something of a mini-rebellion today. At one point, it looked like it was going to reach into his inner circle of supporters with uh, thoughts that Clive Lewis, the shadow mm -hmm. business secretary, was, uh, would, would resign. In the end, he stayed put, and Tudit Sadiq, as you say there, MP for Hampstead and Kilburn, overwhelmingly remained constituency, um, said that she would go. And the Labour leadership is expecting more front benchers to vote against the triggering of Article 50 next week. And this evening, Daniel Zeichner, the shadow transport minister, he has told the Cambridge News that he will be standing by his constituents, 75% of whom voted Remain, and he will live with the consequences. So what does this mean for Labour? Well, this is a rare rebellion where the 
leadership actually has some sympathy with the quotes rebels and that's not just because Jeremy Corbyn campaigned for Remain in the referendum although not with a huge amount of uh, enthusiasm and Jeremy Corbyn's supporters are saying that this really shows how Labour is in a unique position as Ed Miliband was saying two-thirds of its voters supported Remain in the referendum but two-thirds of Labour MPs represent constituents that voted Leave. So there's talk really of how Labour straddles the divide in Britain. So I think next week we can expect some form of discipline against front benchers who defy the leadership but it may not take the traditional form of the sack. And what this really shows is the wider dilemma for a party that is instinctively pro-European but is struggling to come to terms with Brexit Britain.